Well, for anybody who's watching or listening that maybe wasn't, you know, around at your peak, I mean, the band was absolutely huge, like, mm. especially, you know, like Youth in a Nation and Da Boom. And I mean, these songs were <laughs> played at like basketball games and like, yeah, I mean, these were like, this is like post Malone level huge. And <laughs> it, it's got to be. I just, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know lots of people in relatively big bands, but not like that. And that's just got to be a really weird place, especially, you know, coming from playing shows with Zao not that long before. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. I mean, dude, to this day, I'll, I always tell the story. I'll never forget. It was in um, Cleveland and it was snowing outside. We were playing a, uh, uh, this little uh, cafe with Zao and they had two shows back to back. That's how hardcore shows did it. Right. <laughs> And it was snowing out there, and I was like, "Dude, we've never been to Cleveland before. This is crazy. Um, there's no way p- kids are gonna come out. It's it's you know two degrees outside." And sure enough, dude, we played that show. It was packed. Looked outside. There was people outside waiting to get in the second show. And those are those days where you remember, like, dude, this scene was so dope. This is how it was supposed to yeah. be. Especially, you know, I get it. People could look at me and say, "Dude, but you played on big stages, and done that." It's like, yeah, but you don't understand the the spirit and that heart is lost. We were different, you know. When we started with all those guys and did that. It was like, dude, we, this is what it's about. And then you get on those big stages that looks great and all this stuff, but you're like, when do we become entertainers? Right. You know what I mean? Like this is kind of crazy. So, uh, you know, but but we made that choice. We choice. We did everything independently, and we knew that we kind of did as much as we could in that underground scene. And it was like, why not try and see what the next level is? And that's when we reached out and we did showcases and all of a sudden when lay, big labels hit again, we didn't know what was going to happen, man. It just, uh, I don't think that I say this before. Like, I don't think this band was ever meant to be mainstream. It kind of happened. And then now that everybody kind of wants to go back to their sex, drugs and rock and roll and mm-hmm. whatever, you know, post nine 11, you know, we're all safe and the world's safe now, whatever you know, we don't need POD message anymore. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of, well, you know, maybe just, people you know, may not want it, but they definitely need it. <laughs> yeah. I, but I that's mean, always how it works. It's it, always you know? the, the people who need it are rarely the people who want it. Yeah. I feel you. You know, uh, well, I know a lot of those bands, like I remember when earth crisis, you know, quote yeah. unquote sold out and they, you know, made their new oh. records, stuff like that. Um, which, which I get, but their rationale, which I agree with, was you know if you have a message then you should try to bring that message to the biggest possible crowd that you can you know it's cool playing shows to 30 people at you know with hardcore bands that's probably more fun in a lot of ways than playing arena shows but if you have something to say which i believe you guys always have had something important to say you almost have a responsibility to bring that message to the most people you can at least that's how i would feel about it no, I, true, man. I think, yeah, I totally agree. It was, we were just kind of going wherever it took us. You know what I mean? We were used to those small shows. And then when things started to happen, it was like, okay, cool. This is just how it kind of maybe the natural process. Um, but we always felt that it was because of that. It was like, we were, we just felt like, you know, not that we're anybody, but we did feel like we had something to say because it was working in our lives and it was real in our lives. And so like you would share with a friend why not share it you know and as things went on it just um you know there was a when satellite came out it was just a good it was maybe just a good a nice climate you know the right the right climate i should say for people to ask questions and wonder hey what's your band about i like this positive message i like this and so it kind of put us in a, on a pedestal in certain ways and it gave us awesome and killer opportunities and i think once pod kind of broke those boundaries of like oh that's a christian band and who cares what what does that mean then it opened up the doors for a lot of these other bands to come through because before they weren't, they couldn't say if they said they were Christians, it was like, ah, eh, you guys suck. Yeah. But then it was like, Oh, you guys are Christians like POD. Oh, cool. Let me, let me check it out. Let me listen. You know what I mean? Right. So n- not a pat on my, t- no, I'm not patting me on the back. I'm just saying no, that's what happened. We, we fought and we worked hard and we broke down a lot of those stereotypes and those barriers um, that was like, you know, because even bands would be like, oh, dude, I hate Christian music, but P.O.D. kicks ass. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, a lot, of people, <laughs> a lot of people in Christian bands don't like Christian music. That's, you know, that's yeah, yeah. common. But but the rest of the world don't know that. They think we're all, we all grew up on, you know, I'm not going to even say the names, but they just think yeah. we're all like these weak, soft YouTube kids 
that have been brainwashed and don't know anymore. And it's like, we can't think for ourselves. And it's like, wait a minute, I didn't, um, that's what I'm trying to say is that I am thinking for myself, either this is what I choose and, you know, check the resume once again, 